guys, Paul here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm working on a LiftMaster garage door opener. Uh, what happened with this when the people who purchased the house bought it, this garage door opener worked. Uh, they were unfamiliar with how to operate it. So I, I guess somebody just hit the button and it shredded that gear there. See that nylon gear? That thing is toast. So the motor is running. There is no lift action now. Uh, I have a replacement gear. Let me put you guys on my head. I have a replacement gear somewhere. Here it is. Uh, I figured you had to remove a roll pin, like right there, and take the gear off and replace it. But they sell this whole unit with the, uh, the drive gear. The other little worm gear, I guess it's a sensor. I gotta look at it and figure out what the little worm is for. And then the uh, sprocket for the chain. So I believe it's just three bolts that hold this assembly in. So there's a turnbuckle over here on the rail. Right there's a turnbuckle. You gotta loosen that up and give the chain some slack so you can remove the chain and then take that housing off. So I gotta figure out what size these are. Thinking it might be a 9 16 Looks too big for a half inch. Let's try the 9 16 That's what it is. No, it's not. It's not a 9 16 it is a half inch. I got another adjustable wrench to hold that. That's a lock nut on there. So you're going to need two wrenches to loosen that up. Got a small adjustable uh, crescent wrench just to hold it. Gotta back this one off, then turn the other one, and the chain will start to slack up. Gonna have to hold this chain, keep it from spinning. Right, you guys got the idea with that. You just gotta back that off to get some slack to you get the chain off of the sprocket. I'm not gonna keep recording that. Okay, well you can see what I did here. The chain was hanging. I got a vice grip on there, not crazy tight. Just enough to when I pull some slack on this chain this way, it'll stay down on this end so I can get it off of that sprocket. I gotta loosen that adjusting screw up some more and get more slack in this because I still can't get it over the sprocket. So I'm going to be playing with that a little bit more. I'm probably going to go to the end of that turnbuckle and get all the slack in there that I can get. And then I'll uh, try taking that off. <coughs> Thank you. 
This time it's turning without spinning the chain on me. Going counterclockwise. Try not to twist your chain up. Your chain's got to be flat. As you're turning this, you want that chain to maintain that position. Because you twist it up, you're going to have trouble with your door when it tries to run. It's going to kick the chain off. So be mindful of that with the chain. All right, let me see if I can get that vice grip now to slide down with that slack chain. And see if I got enough to get that off of that sprocket. Still having a bitch of a time trying to walk that off of that sprocket. But at least this is staying lax now. I'm gonna try to get that slack up here. All right, we're gonna have to try to get it off the sprocket as we remove that mechanism. dries off of that. I don't know what those adjustment screws do. I'm not a garage door opening specialist. How the hell do I get that out of there? Oh, this clip comes off and that little gear comes out of there. I guess that slides off that way. Let's look at the replacement one. All right, there's a little clip here that comes off and takes that gear out. So the gear curves to the right. Making a text message note for myself here. Sprocket to top, bottom gear, angles toward the right with sprocket up. That way I'll know the orientation for that just in case there is a way of getting it on there backwards. I don't do it. I wish I hadn't touched that adjustment screw gonna have to see what that does I backed it out a little bit from where it was I think maybe a half a turn or so I should have counted them all right we're gonna remove that little retainer and the top bolts on the other one let's try a 5 16 see if that fits I think it's too big yeah, it's smaller than that Long extension here. I brought my 
AC Delco ratchet. Not it either. That might be a metric size. <clears throat> I thought the five sixteenths was too big. Let me check it again. Nope, it is a 5 sixteenths. I was wrong. Oh, that is sliding on that. That's got to be a metric bolt. an eight millimeter. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shut the power off to this on the breaker. I don't feel like getting shocked <clears throat> or burning up that circuit board. Guys, I forgot to film this. I got caught up in doing a repair. There's a little retainer. Let me show it to you over here. <clears throat> Oh, one thing, make sure you turn the power off before you do this. Shut the circuit breaker off. The little retainer here, this goes this way, the gear faces upward. You pull these two side clips out, then it pulls out. This little center piece is a drive pin that locks that gear on that shaft. I guess it drives the sensor or something, because there isn't a lot of load on this from the little worm gear that it's on. But you gotta take that off then slide the housing down, then get those three retaining bolts back in up top there. It's a little fiddly to do, but with patience you can do it. And make sure you don't drop it down your garage drain. That's what I was very concerned of here. There's a drain right below where I'm working. I actually should have put a sheet of cardboard, newspaper or something on there, but somebody was looking out for me, huh? I didn't drop any of them, thank God. I was trying to be very careful about that. Now, my vice grip trick didn't work. So, we're gonna just see if we can muscle this chain on here. And try to pull it evenly over the sprocket. Hoping with a little bit of bounce, I may be able to get it without getting my fingers caught. Got it. Looks pretty even to me. Now we're gonna go tighten that slack up in there. I'm gonna go wash my hands because I got on a brand new pair of pants, which was a stupid idea. I'm gonna go wash my hands, guys. Okay, guys, I just got done adjusting the chain. I've got it hanging down just slightly touching the uh, piece of bar. I'm turning down the force on both of these because this thing shouldn't have chewed itself up being turned on by mistake with the lock on. That shouldn't have happened. It should have sensed too much resistance and shut off. So we want to just have enough force to open that door.
It works. Oh, look at these sweeties. Hey, come say hello. Say hi to everybody. That's a camera. That's a camera. So that is a camera. It's okay. It's a camera. There you go. That's one of my friends. Yes. Yes. One of my friends. Yes. She just recently got adopted on a trial basis. I think she's going to be a permanent member of the household because she's a good girl. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She's a Chihuahua and Dutch Dutchtown mix. Yeah, she's a good girl. Yes, you are. You're a good puppy. You're a good puppy. Yes, you are. All right, guys. I didn't film much of that, but I pretty much explained what you do. Those three bolts have to come out. Turn the power off. Remember to turn the power off. Loosen that turnbuckle up there. You got to back the lock nut off. Then loosen it up. Slide the chain off of the sprocket. Then there's three eight millimeter fasteners in there. I believe they were eight millimeter. You gotta back them out and release that little lock pin there and that gear comes off. That's one of the, it's on a worm for one of the sensors. Now, that's it, now you gotta put the cover on. This is your uh, amount of weight that'll pull. I turned it down more. That did not need to be turned up enough to where it shredded the gear. They had them set up on much higher torque setting. That's why that thing tore that gear up. That should have shut off if the uh, button was depressed with the lock engaged. So, well, it's not a car, guys, but I hope it helps you because it's where you put them in a damn garage. So that's how you fix a LiftMaster uh, garage door opener. Let me show you that other gear. Nice, nice. Look at that. Shoot the shit fucker is spent junk that goes in a bucket bucket that goes right in the bucket bucket all right guys please give a like and subscribe subscribing shows YouTube that you're watching it supports the channel help our channel grow I'm gonna start putting affiliate links up for all the tools that I use like these AC Delco imp little quarter inch drive impact driver and the uh, quarter inch drive uh, quarter inch drive uh, power ratchet I use that a lot of times with a 3 8 adapter on it because 3 8 is the most common socket set I use but uh I do have a 3 8 actually I got an impact driver I use 213 I got a lot of tools I'll show you the tools I'll put links for them they are at good prices and they're good tools if something turns out to be junk, I will tell you guys about it. I'm not going to promote shitty tools on this channel. We're not going to sell out, man. All right, guys. Take good care of your cars. They'll take good care of you. Take good care of your tools. They should last you a lifetime. And don't fuck up your garage door opener. Because <laughs> they're a pain in the ass to fix. Take care. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye. Nice and easy. That's good. Shuts off on its own. Go ahead. You can close it. Now we got to get your garage door openers. Yeah, we just got to buy the, the remote. remote. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if it's locked and we hit it accidentally, will it stop itself? I would hope so. I would. Tr I wouldn't try it. So try not to do that. I would try not to do it. I turned down the settings on there. Yeah. So I'm hoping it would kick off. But to be honest with you, I don't know what every single adjustment on there is. I know what the loads are on the back. Mm -hmm. There's other adjustments here. I, I think this is how far the door goes up and down. I didn't really want to mess with them too much. No, we don't Because you got a little bit of a crack on the bottom. But I'd rather have that than have this chew the gear up again. I'm not, I'm not worried about 
Not a big deal, right? Not to me. Okay. If Don has a problem, then I got to come over and figure that out. You know? He won't have but. a problem. You better not have a problem. Oh, shit. Aktum. It says on there. It does, huh? Aktum. Danger. Aktum. Yeah, attention. Advertisement. Don't get shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's why we turn the power off. <laughs> yeah. All right. I had this cover off. I didn't look at it before I disassembled this. You have the up and down controls here. To increase it, you go clockwise on the up. To increase it on the down, you go counterclockwise. I'm going to give this quarter turn. I'm going to see if I can get that door to shut a little tighter than it is right now. Closing a little bit tighter. I try another quarter turn. Much better. We got it. That's the setting. Let's see how up looks. It's closing tight now. I can hardly see. I just see a little bit of sunlight coming from the bottom of the door before there was a wide gap before. Let's see how our up travel looks. She looked good to me. All right, guys, now that's it. We're done. Watch this. Watch how tight that closes now. Seals up nice on the bottom. I'm happy with that. We don't want to go too much because then we'll strip that gear out again. That's not a good thing. They don't want that. <laughs> I know they don't want that again. I don't want that again. I don't want that again. Got all the tools. Make sure I got all my crap. Got all your crap. Got all my crap. Now it's closing nice. See it? See it. That's Barely good. That's how it should be. Can hardly see anything now. Now it's sealed for you. Much better.